actually, um, some of your friends were asking me. So I remembered for me, it's enough. Remember how we were deciding on whether MRS is diminishing or not. But uh, remember, I told you that in order to get the formal, if you want to show it formally, uh, you should be looking at the derivative of MRS with respect to x. I don't, you know, like for me, the way we did it is perfectly fine, okay? But you want to know about the formal way of doing it, then you should take the derivative of MRS, you know, whatever, for instance, this function with respect to x. But when you take the derivative, just keep in your mind that y is a function of x, right? So basically it would be something like this. You should be taking the derivative of MRS with respect to x, you should be taking the derivative of, of MRS with respect to y, but you see that because y is a function of x, so you should have this guy and you should know that this is negative, right? So we know that, uh, you know, like along the interference curve, this is what you use, okay? But as I said that for me, you don't have to do that. That's perfectly, uh, the way we did it is actually perfectly fine, okay? Now, there is this third, uh, you know, like, different type, I would say. And this time we're going to call, I'm not going to tell you the name again, but we're going to have these, what we call the L-shaped indifference curves. Sometimes these are called Leontief indifference curves, okay? So we're going to have indifference curves of this type, okay? So basically it's y, x, so they would be in different curves like this. So this is u0, u1, okay? So utility level keeps increasing, okay? So basically it's actually, so sometimes we call them L-shaped in different curves. Sometimes they're called like Leontief, okay, due to Vasily Leontief. So, um, but can you have any guess what type of utility function would lead to this kind of uh, indifference curves? It's hard. So it's going to be, uh, so if we want to actually... It should be clear. So yeah, so actually you guys are guessing, uh, you know, like in the right way. So she's saying that Hojam, these guys should be like pairs, right? So these should be stuff that, that go together. What were we calling them? Do you remember? It's actually, so here, this is going to be um, perfect. These guys would be perfect complements. So perfect complements are actually goods that go well together, okay? So just to give you some examples, and then I'll tell you the utility function, okay? Uh, so what are perfect complements? So to give you some idea, for instance, uh, Salep and what? Cinnamon, right? So actually, what else? Guess. So actually, she's right. So the typical, very typical example is that uh, she's saying, for instance, like a pair of socks, right? So let's call it the, uh, the left sock, right, and, uh, and right. Or you can actually call it left shoe, right shoe, right? Very similar. Right, what else? So you can actually have, let's say, rakı and <laughs> Shalgam, right? <laughs> or Rekha and right? Fish. I don't know what is Shalgam in English actually. I think it's carrot juice, some sort of like, right? Uh, what else? Right? So usually coffee and cream, right? Sugar and tea, tea and sugar, of course. There's actually the typical example that is given is DVD and DVD players. But when I was teaching 
203, like uh, a smart student of mine actually told me that but what, what's, what is it with DVD and DVD players? For instance, I always like to have my tea with two, two cubes of sugar, okay? So for instance, so you might want to have all the time, you know, like one um, glass of rakı, right? With one glass of shalga. What about DVD and DVD players? Exactly, right? So one DVD, so I remember he told me, Hocam, one DVD player is enough though, right? So you keep, uh, so it's, uh, but the other ones, you know, they always go with some fixed proportion, right? Together. So, or for instance, left shoe, right shoe. What is the, you know, like, so this is basically, suppose I have one left shoe and two right shoes. So do you think I'm going to do anything with that extra right shoe? This I didn't like. It was more rotisse before, so that was better. <laughs> so actually, right? So do I, suppose I have another right shoe. Do you think it would matter? No, right? So how can we, again, now I'm pushing a little bit. So how can we write down this utility function? What does that mean? You see that if I have one left shoe, one right shoe, let's say I get some utility. I have one left shoe, two right shoes. What do you think? I should get the same utility, right? So here is, you know, via math, how we can show this, okay? So it's basically the minimum of, okay? So you have actually alpha x, beta y, okay? So basically, for instance, if you have one right shoe, one left shoe, then I should be drawing this. It should be alpha and beta. It means that they're equal. Okay, so, or it, they could be equal to one, for instance, so let me do it properly. So this is going to be the 45 degree line, right? So this is actually, right, so it's one, one. So basically, as you guys told me, hojam, two, two, okay? So basically, you can figure this out. So for instance, here, utility, let's call it u0 is equal to 1, u0 is equal to 2, right? So basically, it means that, so for instance, alpha, beta, let's say they're, they all, they're all equal to 1, right? So it says that utility of one right shoe, one left shoe, right? So let's put it here, right? Let's put here left. So I have one right shoe, one left shoe. I get minimum of one, one. I get the utility of one, right? So it means that if I have one right shoe, 1,000 left shoes, it tells me the minimum of one, 1,000. It gives me what utility? One, right? So this is what we call perfect complement. And we're going to show them uh, using this you know, these type of indifference curves. Okay, now comes the question. What is MRS here? What is MRS? So remember, so remember what were we doing? MRS was what? It was I, marginal utility of x divided by marginal utility of y, right? Or the slope of the indifference curve, right? So, but what about MRS here? So these are one thing that you can say the hojam MRS means marginal rate of substitution. Is there any substitution going on here? No, no right? Or you might have the hojam MRS is the slope of the indifference curve, right? Absolute value of the slope of the indifference curve. Here, it's not defined, right? It's not defined everywhere, right? There's a kink. So, or you might tell me that, but still we, we would be able to say something, right? So suppose I'm looking at MRS here. What do you think MRS is? So if I have, you know, in order to, around this here, I have a lot of Y, right? And I have little X. In order to have one more X, you would be willing to give up all your, right, Ys. So you can actually say that here MRS is kind of, infinity, right? And here what? Now I have one y and you know mini x. In order to have one more x, how many y's I'm going to give? You're like, I'm not giving up my only one y, right? So it's going to be MRS is 
zero here. But you see that, I mean, it's not a well-defined concept here, right? Because these, these are complements. These are not, it's not that you substitute one good for the other, okay? So I just keep this all for the, here, MRS, we know that. We know what MRS is, right? It's not defined here. So along this region, it's infinity. Along this region, it's zero, okay? So just keep that uh, in your mind. Now, let me ask you this. Even though we haven't solved the consumer's problem yet, okay? What do you think a smart guy, and you guys are all smart, and your smart grandma too, what would she do? If she want to consume at any, if you guys want to consume, right, at any point, where would you consume? Would you consume somewhere here? At the kink, at the kink right? So you're like, because one, if I have one right shoe, I should, it's enough for me to have one uh, left shoe, right? If I'm going to have more of them, I should be having more of both of them. But it would be very silly for me to consume here, right? So I'm going to get the same utility, but I'm going to have two right shoes. I'm going to pay extra money for that additional right shoe, right? So then, even though we haven't solved consumer's problem, you can actually tell me that the consumer hojam is going to consume at the kink, okay? And this kink is, so you can actually say, let me write it here. A smart consumer, so let's put it for this case, right? So a smart consumer would consume right at the vertices, right? So at the kink, as you guys told me, depending on, of course, the prices of the goods and depending also on, you know, like his income, we'll see later, at the vertices and where that in order to, you know, like uh, write down the points which would satisfy, you know, like uh, this, this condition is going to be, it would be some at a point where alpha x equals to beta y, right? So you see that, so the smart guy would be consuming there and you see that y over x is equal to alpha over beta, meaning that this guy would always consume these two goods at a fixed proportion. So now don't get confused with the perfect substitutes. There, they were substituting one for the other at a fixed proportion, right, at a constant rate. Here, they are consuming these guys together at a fixed proportion, okay? That's why sometimes this is called fi fixed proportions uh, as well, right? So sometimes they refer uh, to this like that, okay? But now, we know that these guys would be consuming at the vertices. Keep this in your mind later when we solve the utility maximization problem. When you have this type of a utility function, you'll see that uh, there you're not going to use any constraint optimization, any Lagrangian and such, because it's not differentiable at all. Then, but you would use this smart idea. Okay, that you would be at the vertex. Okay, so that's what we will do. Now, remember, I showed you three cases. Cobb-Douglas utility, perfect substitutes, and perfect complements, right? There is this weird functional form, which actually, uh, which is more general than these guys, and these guys are all special cases of that general functional form, okay? So that is going to be the fourth thing that I will write down, which is going to be the general form of all these guys, which is called constant elasticity of substitution, okay? Utility function, it's called CES utility function. So now I'll just uh, show you, and all of these guys would be special cases of that CES, okay? So let me give you the uh, form. So let's. this is going to be the fourth one. It would be called CES utility. And CES means constant elasticity of substitution. Now we will understand what elasticity of substitution means, okay? So basically we'll see. 
Now, um, the more general form, I can actually write it, I'll tell you what it means. But you would have a more general form like this, beta y to the power rho to the power 1 over rho, okay? Where rho is less than or equal to 1, okay? So we're going to have a is positive and alpha is positive, beta is positive, okay? So this is the mo most general sort of form. Um, actually, you can, you can have a little bit more general form than this, but you know, this is a, a more general form. It's called CES. And you see that this rho here, so this rho actually shows the degree of substitutability. Okay, so this is a hard word to say. So, right, so this is actually, this shows degree of substitutability. Okay, so what does that mean? So, it means that when rho is equal to 1, what do you think? It's the highest value it can take. It, there should be, right, when rho equals to 1, they should be perfect substitutes. Okay, we'll see. And when rho goes to minus infinity, they should be perfect complements, right? And then you're going to see that when rho goes to 1, and then it's, oh, sorry, when rho goes to 0, it's going to be Cobb-Douglas, okay? So you see that it's a more general form, and it's going to give all these uh, guys, okay? Degree of substitutability between two goods, okay? So I keep my um, perfect substitutes, perfect complements. So now I'll show you, okay? So, now, so let's actually see this. So, as you guys told me that, Hoja, when rho goes to 1, you said what, Hoja, when, let's try to see. When rho goes to 1, and then I'm going to pick A accordingly so that we would have the forms uh, that we had here, okay? So suppose A is, so let's say, suppose A is equal to 1. So A is equal to 1, and when rho goes to 1, what's happening here? Rho goes to 1, this goes to X, right? Rho goes to 1, this is Y, rho goes to 1. It becomes what? So when rho goes to 1, it this becomes, as you said, that hojam, exactly this, right? So it's going to be perfect substitutes. So apparently, so this is going to be alpha x, beta y, right? So this will correspond to the case of perfect substitutes, right? So now there is actually, so this was the easy one, okay? So now the other one is when rho goes to minus infinity. Then, you said that Hojam, the degree of substitutability between these two goods is very low. They're not actually substitutes at all. They are what? You said perfect complements, right? So this is going to be corresponding to the case. But again, to show it as the case we have here, right? So this guy. Uh, I'm going to pick actually alpha to obtain this one. I'm going to pick alpha. Pick A as alpha, okay? Suppose A is equal to alpha, otherwise you won't be able to get it, okay? So basically, so here we said that, right, so this is perfect substitutes. So this is perfect complements, okay? Perfect substitutes, perfect complements, right? So let's try to see this. Can we see it immediately from here? When rho goes to minus infinity, can you see this? So let's actually do it. Can you see it immediately? So we have to, so it's not hard, but uh, we can actually prove it. So let's do it and I'll give you the Cobb-Douglas case, okay, as a uh, sort of like a bonus take home, okay? So let's actually do this. Um, 
Now, in order to so prove, suppose we want to show this, okay? So in this course, we will be able to show many stuff. So this is one of them. So um, suppose, so this is basically, remember what we said, without loss of generality, it doesn't matter. Suppose, you know, like you assume x is, it doesn't matter, x is less than y, okay? And suppose alpha is less than beta, okay? Suppose this is the case, you'll understand why I assume these, okay? But you could have assumed the other way around, it doesn't matter. So uh, we want to have this because we want to make sure that the minimum is, right? So if x is less than y and alpha is less than beta, then minimum is definitely alpha x, right? So I want to get alpha x as a result of this, okay? So that's why I picked them like this. You could have done the other way around, okay? So now this is basically the case. So what about this limit? So we said that we want to send rho to minus infinity right here. So I said that a, so this is basically, so let me, a is equal to alpha and then alpha x to the power rho, beta y to the power rho to the power one over rho, okay? So this is the case now, I want to send rho to minus infinity, okay? So what I will do is that I'm going to take this inside into um, this parenthesis, so let's put, let's be proper, right? And then I'm going to alpha x to the power rho, okay? Uh, parenthesis, one plus beta y to the power rho, alpha x to the power rho, okay? And then all together, one over rho, okay? So this is fine, right? So what is this? So let me actually write this guy here. So this is beta over alpha y over x to the power rho. So I know that y is greater than x. What is this? This is greater than one, right? So what is this guy? This goes to minus infinity. So what's going to happen? If I flip it, it's going to be less than one, right? To the power infinity, this goes where? To zero, right? So this basically goes to zero, and then what happens? So here, let me continue. Rho goes to minus infinity, right? So this is alpha times, what happens here? Alpha times x to the power rho to the power one over rho, right? Right, so so this is basically, wait, uh, now we have an, an extra alpha here, let's see. So we took into this parenthesis, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's fine, okay, no problem. So this is, right, so then what's going to happen? So let me actually take this out. I thought we made the mistake, but no. So limit rho goes to minus infinity, right? Alpha times alpha. So this is, so you can actually alpha, is that correct? Yeah. Times x, right? So when this guy goes to minus infinity, what is this? So this goes to zero. Now you see that in the limit, this is alpha x, right? Done. Okay, so you see we uh, actually uh, made it. So you see that this is this general functional form and you can get all these guys from here. Okay, now the Cobb Douglas one is even harder. Okay, don't hate me, I'll tell you the steps and then so it will be your job. Okay, to do it. Okay, so it will be a, you know like a, a bonus homework. Okay, but I'll tell you the steps. So now this is the second case, so let me do it. The Cobb-Douglas case is this. So this is the third case, right? So this is basically, yeah, the third one. Cobb-Douglas.
right? So Cobb Douglas will be which one? So you see that when rho goes to zero, it's going to give us Cobb Douglas, okay? So this is just um, an example. Uh, this is just another uh, special case, so let me give you the hints. So remember what, uh, and I'll tell you what you guys should take. So suppose in this case A is equal to 1, and then suppose also alpha plus beta is equal to 1 as well. It doesn't have to be, but for you to show it much easier, assume that this is the case, okay? So then remember Cobb Douglas function was this guy. So you got this, right? So because here the, in the perfect complements case, this was the minimum, right? So this is basic and you can actually call it minimum alpha <coughs> x beta y. So right, it gave the minimum of uh, that function. So now here we basically have this. Uh, so Cobb Douglas was Right, we said that x to the power alpha, y to the power beta, okay? So now, or you can also have ln, right? Uh, so you can, or you can have this one. Um, alpha ln x plus beta ln y, okay? But we can actually show this guy. So as, if you look at here, if rho goes to zero, what's happening here? If rho goes to zero, right? This guy goes to zero, this guy goes to zero. Right, that's what we said. And then this becomes what? And rho goes to zero, this would go to infinity, right? And what's happening here, rho goes to zero, one, one, alpha plus beta is also one. So it's one to the power infinity. Do you remember those indeterminacies, right? So you were saying in calculus that those, some of those limits were indeterminate. Do you remember? What were you doing in those cases? Do you remember? Right, so the first thing that you would do, so you guys are smart, and then there was a rule. Do you remember when you have zero over zero? You were using? L'Hopital, right? So good. So, you see that they would be of use somewhere, right? So, uh, but don't worry about it. But as I said, that you, you should just do this as a, as a practice so that you can, you, know, you can use all the stuff that you know to show stuff here, okay? But, um, so basically, right, so this is actually the thing. So as rho goes to zero, um, so it becomes one to the power infinity in determinacy. So here are the steps, okay? So you should take ln, so if you take ln, this becomes ln u of xy, right? So this is going to be 1 over rho, right? I took the, uh, the logarithm, of course, of this guy, right? Don't forget. So I'm going to take a is equal to 1, so I'm going to take the logarithm 1 over rho, ln, these guys, okay? So basically ln alpha x to the power rho, beta y to the power rho, okay? So this is going to be the case. Now, as you said that, oh, hojam, we took, um, so because we would like to know this, so let me write this. So you're interested in this guy, okay? Uh, I know that a is equal to one, so alpha x to the power rho, beta y to the power rho to the power 1 over rho, okay? So you want to figure out what this guy is and you want to show that this guy is equal to this guy, okay? So you want to show that that is the case. So the first thing that you should do is you should take the ln of this guy, okay? And then this is going to be um, it. And then once you have the ln, right? Once you took the ln uh, logarithm of it, natural log of it, and then you see that this is going to be, as you guys told me, Hojam, when rho goes to, as rho goes to zero, this is going to be, right, rho goes to zero, then this is alpha plus beta adds up to one, so ln one goes to what? Zero, right, so it's zero over, so this is, as this goes, it becomes zero over zero uh, indeterminacy. 
then you take, you should apply L'Hopital, right? L'Hopital's rule. How was it? How are we applying it? Right, you were taking the derivative of the numerator and derivative of the uh, denominator, right? So basically that's what you were doing. So let's actually have this. So I'll, as I said, that I'm going to give you all the steps. Okay, so this is going to be, um, right? So this is the limit rho goes to uh, zero, then you take, right, so when I take this, it's one over rho ln, okay? So this is basically the case, right? Do you remember L'Hopital's rule? What was it? Take the derivative of both the denominator and... Okay. Now, if we do it, what's going to happen here? Do you remember how to take the derivative of the of this guy as well? So basically, it's uh, if I so if I apply L'Hopital's rule, right? So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to take the limit, right? So basically, limit rho goes to zero, right? So you take the derivative of the top, and you take the derivative of the bottom. What's the derivative of this guy? With respect to rho, it's one, right? What about the top? So what is the derivative of the, the top part? Or I can write it like this so that you can see it better, right? And so it's zero over zero in determinacy. I took the derivative of the denominator. What is the derivative of the numerator? So right, you have to take the derivative of ln first, right? What is it? 1 over alpha x to the power rho, right, plus beta y to the power rho, times, how do I take the derivative of these guys with respect to rho? Do you remember? How was it? You're not taking the derivative with respect, with respect to x, though. You're taking the derivative with respect to rho. Huh. Do you remember? So do you remember, for instance, you had this, 2 to the power x. How are you taking this guy's derivative with respect to x? 2x. Ln 2. Ln 2. Exactly. So you're going to do this the same, right? So if you were taking this right derivative, so it's very similar, or put it like this, 2 to the power rho, right? I take its derivative with respect to rho. As your friend said, that this was what? 2 to the power rho times ln Two, right? So this is what you would do here. Here it's going to be alpha, right? So it's going to be x to the power rho ln x plus beta x to the, okay, this is going to be too um, crowded out here. Okay, so let's write this. So I'm doing it so that you guys can follow the steps and then fill it up, okay? Now, this is going to be, uh, so let's write this. Okay, so I'm writing it here. So let's be proper, let's keep putting limits. Okay, so 1 over alpha x to the power rho plus beta y to the power rho, okay? And then as you guys told me that, oh, hojam, this is going to be alpha x to the power rho, right, plus ln x plus beta uh, y to the power rho plus ln beta, right? So it's like this. So this is going to be the case, right? Naptik, hmm? what did I do? Sometimes, yes. So what did I, so did I make a mistake? No. Huh. Ah, ah, okay, okay. So this is, uh, what did I write? Huh. Times. Huh. I don't know why I. 
exactly, right? Huh? It's not Elam Beta, right? Elam Moi. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is basically the case, right? So now we have this, and then so then actually. Now it looks a little bit better, right, than before. Now I can actually take the limit, right? So how does it look like? So if you uh, look at those uh, numbers, right? So now rho goes to zero. So what's going to happen here? Rho goes to zero. This goes to? This goes to? And alpha plus beta? One, right? So the bottom is going to be one. And then the top, so it's going to be what? So I know that the bottom will be like this. The top is going to be what? It becomes? So that goes to, so do we have any other, you know, weird case here? Things are working well. So basically, let's see, let's not uh, make a mistake. So this we did, this we did, perfect. And then this becomes, yeah, as you guys told me, Hojam, this part is going to be 1. This part is going to be, right? So this would go to rho goes to 0. This would go to 1. So this would be alpha ln x plus beta ln y, right? So you see that either you can actually have that or what you should do is, in order to get, remember this, I took ln. But what I wanted was actually this guy. So I should right, take the exponential. So that part you do. Because I can do that because actually it's a continuous function. So I can change the limit, the order of the limit and the, you know, like the, the function. So basically we can actually have this e to the power limit. I told you to do it, but I did it myself, right? So basically e to the power ln x beta ln y divided by 1. Okay, don't forget that there's this 1 here that was coming from here. Okay. So what I did, I took the, actually, right, the uh, exponential of both sides. And then I can change the limit and the exponential, the order, because it's um, continuous. e to the power ln u of x, y. Right, and this is going to be, right, I change um, the order, so that's fine. So these guys cancel out. This is basically limit when rho goes to zero, u of x, y, right? And then this becomes, we're done. Elan, uh, right? Yeah, just, just a second. So this is basically, you can put this up, up there. Elan x alpha, right? Plus uh, Elan y to the power beta, right? So this we can do. And then these guys, e to the ln x alpha, e to the ln y beta, these, these go away. Finally, we have this. Done. OK? Huh, yes. Not the, uh, alpha, beta, beta, alpha, we said that alpha plus beta equals to 1. That's why, okay? But you are right. If we had, if I hadn't said that, then that would have been the case. Huh. Yes. Huh? Oh no no, it's a uh, okay. Another question. Exactly, u tilde, you can call it u tilde. So your friend is asking, Hojam, so do you remember? So like if, I, if it's allowed, I can take elan, right? So this is just the elan transformation of this guy, right? So remember, they were all showing the same thing, okay? But you see, this is how we get so uh, the Cobb-Douglas case from the CES, right? But this is actually the... Um, the general form, okay? Uh, so this is, so I want you to, I actually didn't do it like perfectly. So just do the, try to get Cobb Douglas, okay, from the CS, which I did. I, I skipped a few steps, so. Yeah, but not, you should, you should do it uh, properly, okay?
Uh-huh.